what is rightfully mine <laughs> by divine motherfucking provenance, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> He's wildin'. <laughs> Yo, Freddy, I would. What's going on? It's your boy Sinta with the Intel, and you already see Rakai is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Governor. Hey. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. You know, we're about to get started. The Gentleman, the series. Hopefully, you've already taken a look at The Gentleman, the movie reaction that we did just before this. So, a bit of a refresher. Uh, make sure you stay to the very end because me and Rakai are going to have a, a back and forth, a review to see the things that we enjoy, the things that we might be scratching our heads with. So, you know, without any further ado, let's get started. We have achieved the dooms. We have the dooms. <laughs> Hey man, this series has got a lot to live up to because the movie was excellent. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, your brother decided as the eldest son that it was necessary to dispatch me so that I could impress upon you the severity of the situation. What is he, a butler? Yeah. His grace's condition is serious. My instruction is to take you to the airport straight away. It's all been cleared with your superiors. Hey. That money talk. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Right on, man. Let's go. Now, for those who haven't seen the movie, a big chunk of that movie depended on lords uh, being used in order to facilitate the drug game. Shit, mate. To yeah. be honest, yeah, I mean, his goose is well and truly cooked. Damn. Docs has a beat tonight, tomorrow morning latest. Mm. So the they take oldest it well. son seems, seems to be a screw-up. Pretty sure she's been dipping a beak in dad's meds. She's got eyes like fucking hubcaps. All right. Let's keep it together. Come on. Okay. Rich or poor, family's gonna bring some issues. You can get brave. You go swarming off playing tough tub with your friends. It's not. The estate is not to be carved up. That clear. He said the estate is not to be carved up, right? Mm, tough tough. He won't survive without you. Mm. You understand? I understand it. So, okay, so this is Michael and the older brother's Fredo. Doctor. Uh, doctor. Horatio. It's a strong name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horniman. Archibald, some Horatio Horniman. The entire estate gets handed down to the firstborn son. He's the heir, and I'm a spare. Maybe mm. we should topple him together. Mm. <laughs> he said, he's the heir, and I'm the spare. Stuck behind a tractor half the way as well. Smashing smasher easies. <clears throat> right. Is everyone ready? Get you a cup of tea about spots. Spot of tea. Then I'll begin. Mm -hmm. I, Archibald Horatio Land Rover Hornman. Land Rover. Being of sound mind, do make, publish, and declare this to be my last will and testament. To Geoffrey Seacombe. Oh, I feel a chuckles as well the trust fund of a thousand pounds a week until she marries damn a man a man <laughs> she's like damn as well as the property oh, in the south of france i hereby leave to my son all right um edward oh so i think um i was kind of thinking of everybody if, if um you didn't even hear that is it, is it edward, edward. What Edward. Sorry, again for me, old chap. I leave to my son, Edward Hornman. <laughs> I'm the eldest fucking son. It was all supposed to go to me. What, 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 what the fuck is this? Freddy. No, 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 don't, don't touch me. Don't Freddy. He's probably an idiot. It's the will of God. The firstborn son gets everything. It's fucking, it's, 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 it's primogenital is what it is. Primogenital? <laughs> so oh, I'm so sorry. I don't give a good god shit what the terms of the will clearly state. Here, look. <laughs> to the firstborn legitimate male child. Do you actually print that out, Fred? No, Freddy. I don't want to hear from you either. <laughs> you called a lady Macbeth. <laughs> the title, fucking everything, it all goes. To me. Now here's the thing. Mm. If
if he printed that out beforehand. Meeting adjourned. Ready, ready. Your Honor, everybody, let's, we'll pack it up. We'll pick it up later on. It's over. You can go home. Thank you very much, Mr. Fucking Smithers. <laughs> I want what is rightfully mine by divine motherfucking provenance, yeah? <laughs> He's wowing. <laughs> Yo, Freddy, I want. I've been London Bridge. I have been fucked in the face. <laughs> Yo, he, he was double fisted it. Okay. How did you do it, Judas? Who <laughs> of you? Conspiracy of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, even He's the dog. Valid. You see the dog's the, tails down? Yeah. Yo. His grace comes to gloat. <laughs> he said, how'd you no do it, Judas? Just as surprised as you are. It's not the same sort of surprise, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking leapfrogged over your older brother. It's not very fraternal, is it, Edward? Thank you, Wapta. I'll deal with it. <laughs> How do you think that makes me That's feel? That's so wise. Eddie? Hmm? How do you think it makes me feel? How do you think it helps me? God, I want my own wine cellar. I know, right? I don't even drink wine like that. I gave him one million, got 1.5 back three months later. It was unfucking believable Next project, skyscraper in the Maldives. First one, first time, first come, first serve. One, two, three, four million. Bosh! And? Well, he then... He pleased him. And then what? Went Pre tits up. And the tits went... Oh, yo, boy! <laughs> Want me to say, Eddie? It wasn't my fault. God fucked me. Damn. Where did you get four million pounds from? Redwood. And who's Tommy Dixon? Oh, the chap I'm in rehab. In rehab? I owe a scouse crime family. We're coming for you, Freddy. Eight million pounds. Damn. And now you stole the only way I had of getting out of this hole that God fucking dug for me. Lest we forget, sir. The you owe me your life. You. you owe me your life. Now I'm the one lying face down in the water and you have got to pull me out. Freddy, I didn't He's ask crazy. for any of this. That part. The title has no practical value. The business is broken. Mm. There are holes in the roof. Holes in the roof. The, the payroll is ugly. The staff are revolting. And you are a coke sniffing cunt. Mm. However, because you've been passed up and you've been caught with your pants down, I'll look into it for you. Mm. I need to get my hands on a large amount of cash by the end of the week. How much exactly? Eight million pounds. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Six million, Sterling. Your inheritance has made you a very wealthy man, but that doesn't mean to say that you're rich. You're asset rich, cash poor. Mm. There might have been matters we didn't address, but mm. of course I couldn't comment. Well, that's rather cryptic, I mean. Oh, what was your daddy doing? There has been a slightly unconventional approach from a lawyer based in London. 8.4 million pounds for that payment. That? could be a significant sum. But there's probate and capital gains to take into account. Mm -hmm. Taxes. <laughs> I'd be willing to potentially entertain an offer if he's aggressive and quick. Forgive me for stating the obvious. Hey, crib is bananas. Sorry to disturb you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Susie Glass. Hello, Susie. Depends what you consider to be significant. He was making five million pounds in cash a year, plus profit share. The farm. <laughs> five million pounds. <laughs> I'm guessing that wasn't from yogurts and burgers, Miss Class. <laughs> oh no. Yep. You see, it's the uh, the shipping container, <laughs> and we've come full circle to the movie. What the fuck <laughs> is going on? <laughs> this is Jimmy. He's been product supervisor here for. Well, how long's it been now, Jimmy? Three years now, boss. That's how long I've been living under your gaff. <laughs> Finally get to meet. Me and you, we's like, fam. <laughs> <laughs> you's like a dick in it. He's like a dick in it. <laughs> if you were serious about wanting to sell the property, 
And that would be challenging for us. Well, legally, there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, you're right. There's nothing legal we could do about it. <laughs> legal. Yeah. Is that legal. a threat? Yeah. I sense in the equation. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> I know you've always been incredibly loyal to my father. Gave me an opportunity when I was in a bit of bother. Didn't have to, but he did, and that's what can. Mm, that's interesting. When I was in a bit of a bother. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens on this estate without you knowing about it. That'd be fair to say. Mm -hmm. So I assume you have some understanding of what's going on. Would also be fair to say. <laughs> as long as you're going to make them money, they'll sit down and have a conversation with you. You need to be careful. Although they appear to be house trained, don't be deceived by the facade. That's how it is when you go and try and make a deal with the devil. Ahmed, Edward Horneman. Decided to take the house off the market. Ready? Of course, you Grace. <laughs> Good luck, Chuckles. No Grace. Hey, I had a butler. You best believe I'd be putting them to work. <laughs> hey, Jackie, oh. me. Please let Coach be back. That'd be great. If you can take care of four, I'll see what I can do with the other four. I'll get back to you. Yeah, but you'll be in their pocket so deep. Yeah, well, he got two. Oh, and then he can sell that painting. So, he'd like to make you an offer of 250,000 great British pounds for your time. Just for your time? Non recoupable, of course. Would you care to follow me, Your Grace? <laughs> yeah, I probably would have hopped on that chopper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, for 200, 250 stacks of high society, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me go see what Playboy talking about. Is that the fish market? Where the freezer and stuff it? was? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that yeah. is the fish market. She got on her red bottoms. And I wanted to see if there was a way we might be able to resolve it. Eight million is a lot of money. But 100% of fuck all's fuck all. <laughs> Can't just raise off four million and incest. What about if we treat it as an investment into your operation? Mm -mm, don't do that. He's got to apologize. And he's got to admit that he's a cock. Understood. And I want it recorded for posterity. <laughs> posterity. Well, there's videos and there's videos. Mm -hmm. It's not nasty. Remember the last video we saw was the pig video. Now, should we play or should we talk? Do you drink wine? What is that, a wine filter, huh? I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> well, that's quite a number. And I appreciate the lengths you've gone to present it to me. I've changed my mind, however, the land's not for sale. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. what did he say? I smell that cork. He said, I changed my mind, the land is not for sale. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. He's like, clear the bottle of any sediment then return the wine so it can be enjoyed in its original housing. Speaking of housing. Huh. Mr. J. Thank you. My pleasure. Now I want filtered wine. <laughs> mm. Yummy. They're, they're cultured. Two belong to the Crown Estate. One belongs to the Archduke of Moldova and the rest, well, they're in our cellar. Just the subtle grin, you saw that. What about the wine collection? That could reach three, but again, that will take time. It'd be very hard for me to let that go. <laughs> and that's just four million, huh? Mm-hmm. Eight to four. That's very impressive. Think of it as a gesture of goodwill from me. Hmm. Oh, his brother came and got the money, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Eddie, 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 Eddie. Edwina, just hear me out, okay? This guy's a two-time world heavyweight champion. This dude bet the money. It's a dead sub, bros. When it takes all, I'm his trainer and everything. He bet the money. There's no bookies in this kind of fight. It's, 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 it's very exclusive and off the record. It's VVV. That's why your daddy didn't leave you nothing. Tell them you're sorry and get my fucking money back. I gotta go, okay? They're putting phones Freddy, in Kevlar bags here. They're locking them up. Bed. That's how exclusive this place is. Freddie, listen go, to go, me. Freddie, what is this? Beyond stupid. Wow. All right, Sus. Jackie boy. Your highness. Okay. You got the readies? Yeah. 
Here you go. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Sorry. The shoes, no grief. It's my name on the line tonight. All right. Enjoy. Come on. Let's get the money back. <laughs> what if Nikki was in there? <laughs> Brad Pitt, Nikki, that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. If Joey wins, your brother's about to double his money. But if he loses, that money doesn't belong to him anymore. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. Easy. Take it easy. Susie Glass wants to see you. Mm, listen I'm to not him. done with you. Okay, yeah. whatever. Why don't you fuck off? See, uh, he's young and brash because... He, he handled Giancarlo completely different. He went. I think you should fuck off back to your country ass and wank off your Spaniel. Get your hands off me. Careful, posh boy. Nah, man, he's got training. Mm. Sleep. Oh, no! Why is he lying on the ground? Someone get him off, off the ground. Sleep. We need to leave now. Do you mind if I talk to him? Once things have calmed down. I'm a posh twat who fucked up. E-I-E-I-O, I <laughs> fucked up because I'm a knob. E-I-E-I-O, with a twat twat here. <laughs> How old is Tommy Dixon? It's a small price to pay. Because <laughs> I'm a knob. <laughs> do you want an apology? I don't know. Do I? Yes, you do. We need closure. Yeah. Here's a see you, remember? He was a posh twat that didn't have that kind of backup. One, one sticky pig. <laughs> I just wanted to say sorry. Damn. From the bottom of my heart. That ain't worked, him. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you back the money and I said I'm sorry. Say, so, are we cool? Uh, I don't know. Damn, Susie. Are we cool, Edward? Susie got power, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. <laughs> that dumbfound yeah, look. <laughs> hey, man, but, your yard man told you these are serious people. I, I, but that was a double yeah, lesson a for her. Oh, we did. We did. We did talk to him. But filling in the blanks, is it too much dog and not enough man? Too much untrained dog. Mm. And we are in the dog training business. Mm. Okay. Yo. Yo, Susie yeah. don't, man. Susie's selling me. Well, fuck her duck. Well played. How'd you manage that? Four million off the eight. I mean, pff, Christ. Suck his cock for four big ones. Probably have. Well, that's good to know, Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Do a little teapot dance. Right. He, gonna the gun, say he, he, do it. he wants you to say you're a cock. He wants me to. You're going to sing and dance it. Fine. I'm a cock. There. Fucking easy peasy. No problem. Good. Stop swinging that gun, man. He wants you to do a dance and sing the apology. It's right here. <laughs> Well, he's dressed like a chicken. Yes, there is that too. <laughs> I'm a chicken. Cluck, cluck, flap, flap. I'm so sorry. There. What else? He wants to film the performance. <laughs> he's like, you had me until you said that. <laughs> you have to do everything that I tell you from now on. Hmm. But you've taken everything else from me. Why not take what's nah, left? Nah, we passed that song and dance. Is that clear, Freddy? I feel that. Ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. Tradesman's entrance, you are a tradesman after all. The trade was, I'm dropping from eight to four. So I think that means I can walk in the front door. <laughs> oh, God, something bad's about to happen. Is that for me, is it? As promised. At least it's a nice sweatsuit, though. Nah, let's so just hold it Hey, Jesse, you up, mate? Damn, doesn't made a comeback. I need a minute to, uh, <clears throat> get prepared. Oh, he about to dip, isn't he? He gonna run. Oh, this is about to go horribly wrong. Uh, You're gonna dance, and then I will judge whether I deem your performance film worthy. There's a reason I didn't ask you to get dressed as an eagle. Eagles don't dance. They soar through the air. But a chicken's the bottom of the food chain. But it is delicious. So delicious. <laughs> Therefore, 
You don't just pretend to be a chicken. You've got to actually be, be the, a chicken. The chicken. Oh, this is method acting. Okay. You know, the you remedy is your in the best. poison. Daniel Day Lewis. Come on. Let's see your chicken. All right. A chicken that vapes. What like a fucking chicken? <laughs> Do the sound. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want you to feel it. I want you to transform into yeah. a chicken. No, he is hiding in giraffe ass right now. It's, this is going to go bad. Look, there's all grain there. Look, come and pick the grain. Come here. There's a win. I want you to eat the win, you fucking chicken. That's a lot, man. I don't know. He would have be dead, so. Fuck. I need to go to the toilet. Mm. Hey, Tony. Who's the chicken now? Freddy! Mm. Fuck off! Come on. Freddy got to go. Yep, I see him on a little rowboat out in the middle of the lake. Even Susie like, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're gonna see a cut down version of our reaction because we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture in picture. But if you wanna watch the whole thing with us uncut, uninterrupted, head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Sintel. Become a member of this channel. You'll get access to the full uncut reaction, but you will need your own Netflix, HBO Max, or Disney Plus subscription. So you can open up each episode in an adjacent window to our reaction. We'll give you a little time with a small reference video at the bottom of the screen to help you sync up the footage. And it'll be like you're watching it with your favorite pals from the internet. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, that's all I can say <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> Guy Ritchie, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, in case you were ever wondering, well, it looked like if Guy Ritchie jumped into television, you know, we, we've, yes, there have been some instances in the past, but a Netflix television show where you can, you know, do a little bit more, have a little bit more leniency. Um, yeah, I give you exhibit A. I liked it and I loved it, actually. I'll even go as far as say I, I loved it. It went a little bit above what my expectation was going to be. Rakai, what are your initial thoughts? First of all, let me say, I I loved it too. <laughs> this this episode was so good. It was called Refined Aggression. <laughs> and really from the brother Edward, you got that, a kind of refined aggression. Oh man. Um I was really wondering how you could leave the world of the gentleman the movie and put it into a way where you make a, a tv show so far we haven't gotten any of the characters from the movie but actually right now i'm okay with that because like the father that died i don't know if he was actually in the movie or he was just one of the other lords and one of the other houses that mickey referred to mm. Because he said he had a dozen of them all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, but to drop this in the world, and you know the circumstances behind the farm, what's going on underneath the estate. Oh, this is excellent. And of course, like Mickey, if he's still doing business, he wouldn't be dealing with all of them personally or whatever. And even Raymond wouldn't be dealing with all them personally. So he would have people like Susie Glass or her father, Bobby Glass or whatever that deals with stuff. You know, they, they're middle management. Um, I don't know, just I'm, I'm loving this right now. Like if this is what we're going to get, and I'm sure that the chaos and uh, violence um, and even banter going to continue at this pace if this is what we're going to get mm -hmm. i'm here for it this was excellent yeah yeah and then there's i was hoping to because i know i know for a fact that guy richie's definitely the producer but 
on these things, when it comes to, to series and shows, um, a lot of times uh, they have multiple directors, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but on this one, you can tell. I think this one was actually directed by, by Guy Ritchie. And I don't know how the other pre next episodes are, but I love that you can feel the Guy Ritchie-ness of it, if that's a, if that's a thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has that, you know, the, 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 the quick, sharp dialogue, the really interesting characters. Never characters that blend, you know. There's never, there's never a gray area with, with Guy Ritchie characters. They are all exceedingly one thing. You know, and you you get that as well. Plus, there's like, you know, there's things that Guy Ritchie just does a lot. You know, he, he always has things that deal with like boxing. Um, you're always gonna deal with something with somebody that owns like a, a pig a pig farm or a fish market or something where animals get slaughtered. There's a lot of animal references with a lot of with a lot of his stuff. Um, there was a bit of a hat tip to some some previous uh, actors that were in there, and that's uh, Vinnie Jones who plays. Uh, the, the the greensman the guy that that like attends the the the, the yards and the fields per se um yeah it's it's it just smells like guy richie it feels like guy richie it tastes like guy richie you mm -hmm. know it's just it's it's palpable and that's what i was hoping for i was hoping that this wasn't just in name you know because it's lots lots of times things get produced and then it still kind of feels a little bit different does it's not necessarily the the the, the essence of, of the original creator. That's not the case with this. But, and I've said this, and we've said this a million times, a million times over, and we're gonna continue to say it a million times over. This is a pilot. A pilot is supposed to be like that. A pilot is supposed to be over the top good. It's supposed to have you invested in everything and the characters, and it was very smart for Guy Ritchie to be the director of the pilot. I'm all on board. Yeah. I'm all on board just off of the strength of this pilot, but, I'm also very realistic, and I know that I've been duped by a many a pilots a many a times before. So I I am happy, and I'm happy to go and keep opening these doors to these new episodes. But there is a part of me that's in the back of my mind is just like it still has to prove itself. I agree with everything you just said. So, of course, I had to look it up. Now, here's the interesting thing. This executive produced, produced by Guy Ritchie and from the world that Guy Ritchie created. But in looking it up, he only wrote two episodes, which are, drum roll please, mm -hmm. episodes one and two. Mm, see. And he only directed two episodes. Drum roll please, episodes one and two. Mm. Mm. Now, that does give me a bit of concern, <laughs> right? Just a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. There was there was another there was another guy who's the main writer for five episodes, and another guy who's the main writer for another episode. And they had like some co-writers. Now, I would think, I would think that if Guy Ritchie said. They were good enough to come in and write the episodes and they passed the passed the muster, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, no, no, this is good. This is in line with what I would do or what I would write. Then, okay. Um, and I know we had this discussion before when we were talking about Reacher because Lee Childs was the original writer of all the Reacher books. But then he got to a point where he brought in his brother to help him co-write and then Lee Childs walked away and his brother has taken over the writing. Um, and from what I understand on that series, there's no hiccup, mm -hmm. like you can't even tell. Now they're brothers, so maybe they have a very similar style. And I guess you can find other people out here that are very, um, uh, you know, that, that mesh very well with your style. Like when we were talking about Mr. and Mrs. Smith, mm -hmm. um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, she left. She had a creative difference with uh, Donald Glover because their two writing styles don't mesh. Mm -hmm. But my concern here is, okay, so the writing probably meshes and it probably sounds and looks, feels just like Guy Ritchie, but... Some other people came in and directed, and then 
we started off strong. We started off strong with episode one. Mm-hmm. We followed that up with a strong episode two. My concern now is, you know, there's always that lag in the middle. There's always the lag. Always. Where we do some character development. There's that lag in the middle. And then you got to land this bad boy. Like, I'm not understanding Guy Ritchie coming back to, you know what I'm saying, to hit that hit that swan dive, hit that triple Lindy. Like, to, <laughs> you, you got to... Gotta land this bitch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> You know, yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Maybe, and maybe he let somebody else do it because they're good at cliffhangers or good at writing it in such a way that it leads to season two. Maybe he's not good at that. Maybe like he's like, no, no, I don't want to leave a whole bunch of loose ends. Like I'm wrapping this shit up. So, yeah. But I'll, I'll say, I don't know. I, I, I will say this though, because uh, I do want to talk about the things that I liked. And, when you're dealing with Guy Ritchie, it's always characters. He's he's a character-driven director, and you have to have actors that can absolutely deliver. And I love Eddie Horman, Eddie Horniman's character. Eddie's great. He is. He's very good, and I can understand mm-hmm. why you'd want to, you know, build the franchise on Eddie's shoulders. But his brother mm-hmm. Freddie, that actor Daniel Ings, I think that's his name, is mm-hmm. he is stealing the show like i hate him i I can't stand him and once again i I say that as a compliment i say that as a compliment this dude unnerves me in a way that's just oh my god i just i want to sock him in his mouth that's just every time he's on scene i just want to punch him in the mouth and that's brilliant that's good we need that because eddie's the straight and narrow freddie is the absolute it's pure he's pure chaos it's pure chaos and i love the third person that that makes this this trilogy where I think is going to make you shoot it off in a superstar and if it works well is Susie Glass the character playing Susie mm-hmm. her her calmness and subtle she's she's like a she's like a snake in a weird kind of way because a snake can be beautiful but it's very dangerous and it can strike at any given time and it's venomous like it's she there's something you can't take your eye off her not necessarily because of you know she's you know she's not hard on the eyes but just because you don't know what her character is going to bring like her getting the five the four million back and then and then bringing eddie to the house to get the apology like i didn't see that coming like i knew that she was going to finagle her way back and then he's bloodied and beaten and she's over here you know she's she's orchestrating people that are dangerous you know, people that mm-hmm. that that could turn on her in, in, in an instant or whatever it is, but she exudes this power and she exudes this confidence. So them three, those three folks right there is enough for me right now. And then, of course, the other side characters, like what can you say when you bring in Giancarlo? Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, you, yeah. you, you just you just you can't go wrong with with, with yeah, that. he does no wrong. Yeah, yeah, he does absolutely no wrong. And please, please, please bring more of him in. And he seems like he's going to be our villain. That's what it seems like because he's trying to buy it because he already knows what's going on underneath. And I can't think of a better villain <laughs> than, than, than Giancarlo. Maybe he's not, but at least that's how I'm sensing it. Um, and then, of course, uh, the last one is, of course, the hat tip to, to Vinnie Jones again who I think is going to be a problem in later episodes because we he hinted at a, a past that his that uh, Eddie's father had maybe saved him from you know he's the mm-hmm. he's you see that he he um uh, nurtures wild damaged things that's I think that's very important as well you know so I think just off of the strength of the characters we have something we we, we have something that that is that could potentially be very special I co-sign everything you just said. Uh, this The name of this episode was Refined Aggression. And really, why you might think that that was Eddie, it wasn't. It was Susie Glass. <laughs> Susie Glass was the refined aggression. Like she, even when he was going over to talk to dude, he was like, us oh, to Sticky Pete. She's like, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> they went over again and she's like, here, sit down. Watch your fight. She said, you mind if I talk to him later when things have calmed down? Like, she didn't get out of pocket. Uh, and the thing is, being, it's, it's not even about being clever. It's um, knowing 
how to deal with the, you know, like when she gave the whole analogy about untrained dogs, it was fantastic, you know, because like even the whole thing about um, dealing with your boy Bobby Dixon right here at the end, mm. like that was a whole problem. She told Eddie, stay out of it. Don't make this worse. And I, I really don't know how he could have made it worse because uh, oh, Fredo. <laughs> Fredo, Fredo, Fredo. He he is. This is just like the Godfather. He's Fredo. You know what I'm saying? You know, just like the whole thing with Sticky Pete. It reminded me of that scene where they went to the the little uh, the club in in Havana in Cuba and stuff. You know, you know, uh, Michael. You don't talk to a man like uh, you like Mo Green like that. You know what I'm saying? Boy, don't you ever go against the family like and Fredo don't have no clue. Freddie, uh, boy, Freddie is a F up oh, from the word go. Problem. Uh, problem. Jeez. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, but you're right. He was he was stealing the scenes because he is just pure unhinged chaos. Every time he stepped on the the, and you could chalk it up to him acting like you know what I'm saying he's on that cocaine, but hey. He was on the way he went off when he found out he didn't inherit everything was pure <laughs> was brilliance. Yes. Oh my God, it's pure brilliance. <laughs> and he just came with the insults. He had the zingers for everybody. <laughs> oh, he called his sister Lady Macbeth. I thought I was a <laughs> oh man. He called his brother Judas. He just right <laughs> off. <He> just, <laughs> Oh man, yo, that's uh, yeah, that part, yeah. man. Uh, yo, let's 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 close this out. Uh, give me some final thoughts regarding uh, just this, this this first episode and maybe potentially what you're thinking as for the series as a whole. Well, I mean it, that the way that this first episode ended, that's almost like cliffhanger ish. Like Fredo, uh, Fredo, Freddie then put his foot in it. He then stepped in it bad because not only Bobby Dixon wasn't just Bobby Dixon Bobby Dixon's from a crime cartel yes I don't know if they Russians or whatever but they serious people serious um, people <laughs> and and they serious people and the fact that you know like even they had their whole little family sit around um he was eight million pounds and you know and it's because we work in dollars. Mm-hmm. That's about $15 million. Yeah. You was getting off half of that. You was getting out of half of that. You know, and you didn't think about your pride at all when you made the bets and stuff. And then you took more money and made more bets. You you know, you out here has a kite. Uh, that is a very dangerous person to be around because it's almost like every time Freddie comes on screen it's like well how can I get everybody killed today (laughs) Um, how can I mess this up for everyone yeah yes how can I you know yes thank you for letting me wake up how can I completely F up this day (laughs) for everybody (laughs) Um, and then I I hate that I saw it I saw it somewhere in the in one of the previews in the trailer I think for this where Eddie finally reveals you know the what's going on underneath the estate to Freddie and that seems like the mother of all bad ideas like yes yes, it seems like the less Freddie knows the more insulated you are from pure damn chaos because clearly his elevator does not go to the top (laughs) floor um I, yeah. I, I'm I'm very interested in episode two because I know it's pure guy Richie. And then really I'm interested in this entire series because really you have to think it's still got nobody knows who the other directors and writers and stuff are. This has got Guy Richie's name attached to it. Mm-hmm. So he wouldn't have let it come out the door, hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. if it didn't show up and show out and represent him properly. Um, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, just about all of his work, just about all of it. Um, so I'm looking very forward to this, you know, and again, um, 
Thank you to everyone who joined us. If you have not watched, thank you for watching this, but if you have not watched our review of The Gentleman, the movie, go do that right away. Just hit pause, stop before you watch the rest of these and go watch that. Um, keep commenting, keep sharing, keep liking, you know, and please, and if you, by all means, if someone led you here and you haven't subscribed, what are you doing with your life? Do that immediately. It, it's a little button. Are you good? Hit the button. Done. Done so. Uh, to all the patrons, thank you so much. You know, you uh, YouTube people, if you're not a patron, you, I mean, y'all are here with us. Y'all rocking with us, but you're missing out. We're doing some other big stuff on, on uh, Patreon. You need to get there. You can catch me on all social medias at Nuke from the Ville, N U P E F R O M D A. V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Hey, thank you so much. You've just been enjoying the way me and Rakabi chopping it up. Be a friend of the channel. Hit that subscription button. And of course, give us that thumbs up because that's how the people know you're digging what we're giving you. And if you've really just been enjoying like this extra bit of dialogue that we've, that we've had, uh, that is what we bring uh, to the Patreon as well. Some of the next episodes, uh, our discussion is going to be a little bit shorter uh, just due to making sure that we give everybody on the Patreon something a little bit special. So now that you've seen how we've chopped it up, we look forward to seeing you over in those Patreon streets. Hey, thank you for your time and we'll catch you all on the next episode all right y'all take care